Thank you for joining us for this second half hour of Local 3 News at 4. I'm Cindy Sexton, joined by Hamilton County Mayor Weston Womp, and we're so glad you're here with us. Thank you, Cindy. A lot of things going on, aren't they? There's always a lot oh of things going on. Oh my goodness, it yeah. seems like something new pops up out of the blue every once in a yeah, while. So, well, first of all, let's talk good. about the new paternity leave policy announced this morning at the commission meeting. Well, maternity and paternity leave, mm -hmm. you know, county government has done a lot of things really well over the years, and then we've tried to bring modernizations and a new perspective to things and we launched the center for thriving families in this budget season we'll, we'll do some formal announcements around what that organization and county government is going to do to support young families but mm -hmm. as we tried to set a new standard for how we're taking care of our youngest citizens i asked a couple months ago what is the county's paid maternity leave uh what does that policy look like even though shelby and i had, had a child I was back to work in a couple days and didn't think sure. much of it. Found out that we don't have a paid maternity leave policy. Matern for the father Maternity and paternity. Well, both. we never had a paid maternity. I mean, oh. really the focus here, I would say, is ah. on moms. Yeah, of course. It's eight uh -huh. weeks for county employees mm -hmm. um, and, and who are mothers and, and two weeks for fathers. Okay. And, uh, but we've never had anything. So, you know, zero mm -hmm. to eight weeks. I'd say eight weeks is probably not totally sufficient. Those early weeks, as you well know. Well, it's a start. I've found is just critical. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we were a little embarrassed to find out the county just didn't have a paid maternity leave policy. It's one of those things that was overlooked over the years. And as we just think about how we should be a good employer, sure. but then in our position, it's not just about being a good employer to 2000 county employees. It's mm -hmm. about setting a standard mm -hmm. in economic development as, uh, as a right. good steward in local government. So we're excited. We, we didn't get any pushback at the county commission today. So I anticipate a week from now that will be a part of uh, the county government policy handbook. Okay. And, and I hope that it gives us an opportunity to uh, practice what we preach in encouraging other employers in our community to be family friendly employers and uh, the United Way has done a lot to encourage uh, particularly business leaders in our community to think about moms and dads mm -hmm. uh, as particularly in those early months uh, and early years of a child's sure. life. All right. uh, that, that's our future workforce. Those mm -hmm. kids are going to grow up to be the Cindy Sextons of our community and so we're just saying in all the small and big ways let's make sure we're supporting them. Okay like that. I, I'm sure, like you said, no pushback on that one. Yeah. All right, this is one that's getting pushback. We're talking about the Golden Gateway site that was, the plans were to turn it into a school, and then the plans were that it would cost a certain amount. Then J Justin Robertson recently said Oof. the project will cost about 30 million more than originally planned. Um, what's going on with that? I know there's a meeting Monday. What is happening? We're, we're talking about what will happen with the Gateway site. Well, there's a lot to unpack there. Sure. I, I would say to start, Dr. Robertson and I have been partners in exploring how we can modernize school facilities for over two years. Mm -hmm. We have talked, I would say, every week for two years, some weeks two or three times on these subjects. We continue to be aligned. One thing I want to be clear, because you, you had a story that ran in the newspaper over the weekend that the Times Free Press has now published corrections on. And as you know, you've been in this business a long time. It's, it's tough to cover complex stories. Times Free Press always had a great relationship with them, like I've tried mm -hmm. to maintain a relationship with Channel 3. Uh, but this story did go sideways, and, it, and there was only one commissioner who, who was quoted in the story. It was the most di disgruntled commissioner. And in, the next thing you knew, there were a lot of things that were shared in the story. For example, there was an allegation that I had signed an MOU that had not been uh, uh, signed or approved by the commission. The facts are that that MOU that was uh, MOU referenced, for our viewers. a memorandum of understanding, okay. so it's sort right. of a, an mm -hmm. interlocal agreement, a contract. The allegation was that I signed it. Mm -hmm. uh, the commission, county commission, never approved it. The facts were that that memorandum of understanding was passed through the county commission in 2004, 20 years ago. So the point is that story stirred up a lot of drama. The story now, the Times Free Press is, is continuing to correct, and we've had a productive series of conversations mm -hmm. with their editors and I'm meeting with them tomorrow uh, because we think there are further things that okay. need to be corrected. What, what are, what's happening then? Tell us if you can. Sure. I know well, it's I think, complicated, I think an but in a nutshell. An important thing to, to clarify for taxpayers and viewers is that we're still in the planning stages. So when we talk about there being adjustments in our expectations of price, mm -hmm. we've not spent this money yet. In fact, that's what we've tried to avoid. Is like with Tyner, we're gonna build a beautiful Tyner. It's almost finished. But that project is $30 million more expensive than it was originally yeah. anticipated to be. Mm -hmm. So in order to avoid that happening again, we've gone through a very laborious, detail-oriented process 
so that when we go to county commissioners and we go to school board members, we've got firm numbers. And when I say we, I'm talking about me and Dr. Robertson, mm -hmm. our public work staff, right. his facility staff. So and what so happens the, on Monday? The question is, is Monday a meeting with the, the, at the school board? The school board, that's what I'm understanding. Is that something that you would be know a part the, of? I'm not sure what the school board's doing, okay. but we've been on the okay. same, I think my, my point right. is we've been on the same page with the school system all along. Mm -hmm. You know, it's we're now reacting to an erroneous newspaper story yeah. in the Sunday paper okay. that you know may or may not have had political motives. I think what the community needs to know though is that the gateway which was acquired from Blue Cross mm -hmm. under the auspices of Career and Technical, the momentum is still headed in that direction. Mm -hmm. There was a point in time where Dr. Robertson and the school board wanted to consider is this also a creative arts school opportunity. When we did preliminary diligence the price for that came in much higher than anticipated. And what I'm hearing from Dr. Robertson is the school system is moving back in the direction of that site being used for career and technical education, mm -hmm. just given the geography that will largely serve minority students. It's a positive thing. It's a very popular, reminds a lot of people of the legacy of Kirkman in our community. Yeah. So I think it's I think everything's so CCA, going quite well. What happens with them? Well, so a lot of people in the CCA community communicated with our office to say, we don't want to move. We love our place on the hill, the original city high school. Mm -hmm. I think there are some investments we could consider making up there. Sure. It's one of the highest performing schools in the state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we were sensitive to is not forcing a change on a school that might not want it and also being sensitive to what their standards are. But then we also were facing once uh, consultants and architects had taken a look at it, we were looking at an additional $30 million beyond what the school system had estimated the project right. would cost. Right. And so again, it's very complex, but we want the public to understand that these changes in dollar amounts, the dollars have not been spent yet. We're all in the planning stages. And it's good, frankly, for these dollar sure. amounts to fluctuate in the planning stage. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to avoid is a fluctuation in how much yeah. money we have to spend right. once we're well, in you say, construction. Oops. <laughs> right. I get it, I get it. Okay, one other thing that's mm -hmm. just come up recently mm -hmm. is the health department. Uh, yeah. uh, selling the building to yeah. Erlanger. How did that come about? Did Erlanger come to you? They did. Almost from my first day in office, Erlanger came to me to say, really, in order for us to serve the Tennessee Valley through the, the downtown campus, which is where so much of their services are concentrated, they're landlocked, as, mm -hmm. as many of us know. It's a, it's a small campus, historic hospital. Hard to overstate the importance of Erlanger to our community. I was born there. My five children were born there. We all have our, my mother's life was saved there, right? Mm -hmm. We all have our stories where we've, we appreciate and respect the role Erlanger plays in our community. And so when they came to us to say, mm -hmm. the three acres that are currently the health department, they really need for their long-term planning. Mm -hmm. That set in motion two years of exploring other sites, of negotiations. Mm -hmm. UTC has been a great partner. And now we're looking at Ingle Stadium and that that's property. Right. So that's and so, what we're talking about. It's an about. out okay. parcel of Ingle Stadium okay. uh, that would be uh, redeveloped into the health department. It's not the part of Ingle, the historic structure, the sure. stands. Okay. The, it's not the, in fact, I think UTC has got different plans to redevelop those in a historically appropriate way. So we don't want people to be confused. It's not like the health department being built adjacent to the, sure. the stadium will right. cause the stadium to be demolished. In fact, okay. we hope and have advocated that that's not the case. Okay. But it's exciting because yeah. you're talking about a new health department that will really allow us to explore uh, modernizing the delivery of public health. Mm -hmm. It'll also be the home of the Center for Thriving Families, all there in the Erlanger mm -hmm. Corridor. And then we'll get to take a lot of pride uh, as a community and in county government for what Erlanger does with that three acre campus okay. that's currently all the right. health department. All right. Well, that's interesting because I think, well, and it's not moving that far, so that'll make a difference. It's all right there in that health care okay. corridor. Now, UTC's one thing. building a nursing school there. Mm. Erlanger's going to be building Good a new project, and then you'll have a new health okay. department on the east side. Okay. Hamilton County Fair. I know you like to talk about that. Well, it's we're next week, excited. right? excited. That's right. Yep. All right. First day is coming up. what day? Friday. Okay. Friday evening kicks off with a rodeo. This is all at McDonald Farm. It's really the second year of this county fair. Mm -hmm. The county had always had a fair. It was, I'd say, one scope at Chester Frost. It's a very different animal, mm -hmm. uh, pun intended, because there are a lot of animals at McDonald Farm. <laughs> if you've never been to McDonald Farm, yep. it is an incredible place Beautiful at site. the far north tip of the county. So we start with a rodeo and then a band that a lot of millennials loved growing up called Sister Hazel is the mm -hmm the feature act on Friday night. Saturday is the second day of the rodeo, and you've just got all sorts of stuff that happened in the middle of it, lumberjack shows. And Karen Shostak, who was with Friends of the Festival running Riverbend for years and years, is our deputy parks director, and she's in charge of the county fair, and she does just an unbelievable job. We're very grateful for the energy that Karen's brought to this. And so our own hometown guy, Larry Fleet, 
who, if you've never heard Larry Fleet, he's like an up and coming Chris Stapleton. You mm -hmm. should go Spotify or Google okay. Larry Fleet. He's the Saturday night headliner. So it's, it's all the good things. Our goal with redesigning and reimagining this county fair would just be that it'd be an incredible opportunity for families and friends to gather. Okay. And so it's three, three full nights, two full days, all mm -hmm. day Saturday, all day Sunday. And then Sunday closes with a big fireworks show. And Sounds we just invite people okay. to come out. It's a celebration of Americana, mm -hmm. among other things. We've, we've moved it back into fall. So it feels sort of like a fall festival over Veterans Day weekend yeah. so that we can honor those who've served our country. All right. All right. So much fun to talk to you today. Well, thank you. But so much is going on. We My squeezed head's in a spinning. Lot. Yeah, we did. We did. All right. Thank you very much, you, County Senator. Mayor Weston Womp. And we'll be right back with more of Local 3 News at 4.